Give that thing a rev. <laughs> Active arrow on a vintage 911? What the hell are you talking about? Welcome back to another episode of Wrench. You heard me right. This is going to be a really, really, really cool episode. First and foremost, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Michael. I've been building this car behind me now for about two years. This was a 1969 Porsche 911 S race car that had been completely carved up that I'm now making back into a Porsche 911 ST street car powered by a twin turbo Subaru EZ30R. Now the power does not tell the whole story because the concept of this car is if it comes on a 2022 Mercedes S-Class and I can integrate it invisibly into this car, I'm gonna give it a go. Which brings me to the first part of this show, which is bad news, good news. Bad news is, this car will not be at SEMA 2021, which was always going to be the case. I lost my spot that I had been working towards about a month ago, six weeks ago. It's a long story, not getting into it, but it took a bit of the wind out of my sails. Now, the upside of all that is I have more time to do the things I wanna do. And frankly, this car deserves a little bit of time and effort. Now, I was following a Porsche 992 a week or so ago. And as we were driving, the rear of his deck lid poked up like a ducktail, And I thought, oh, that's so cool, active arrow. But then I thought, wait a second, why can't I do active arrow? Now, if you guys remember a few episodes ago, myself and Caleb from Built Official built this air scoop rear deck lid meant to feed air into the intercooler. Now, I loved the work we did on it. I loved that I was able to fabricate it out of steel and I thought it was really cool. However, I didn't love how it looked on the car. It was too much flat space. There wasn't enough breaking up the rear. And even though it was just like the rendering minus the louvers, I just didn't love my own execution of it. Part of the issue was the deck lid was really crappy when I started with it. It was all twisted and dented and weird. And it took me forever just to get the thing into normal shape that I could put on the car. Two, like I said, the spacing didn't look great. And three, the execution of the scoop itself looks like a little, it looks amateur. It looks like my first time doing it because it was my first time doing it. Now I happened to have a Porsche 964 deck lid that I got from one of my sponsors, Autobahn Dismantlers in San Diego. Now they get all of the takeoffs from the Singer cars. So they have tons of doors and hoods and deck lids and fenders and anything you need really for a G body on up car. They do have some early stuff, but if you need anything for your car, I mean, they have a row of fenders 50 feet long. It's crazy balls. Nevertheless, I grabbed a deck lid, which was in perfect condition. And last night I got a bit of a bug up my arse. I had also grabbed a Porsche Boxster motor. The Boxster motor raises the tail on the Boxster. So I did a bit of a number on this rear deck lid. As you can see, I was able to pull off this sort of active ducktail situation. What we're gonna do today is see if I can get the thing fully executed, like on the car, the way it's supposed to be. Now the craziness on the far end of this is this car is being powered by the Haltech 2500. Because I'm doing a drive-by-wire throttle and it will know what gear I'm in as I'm driving, I should theoretically be able to execute the mechanicals on this and get the thing to actually go up and down with the motor. Now down the road, I should be able to connect this thing to the Haltech 2500 ECU, which enables me to put a speed sensitive trigger on it. So just like that Porsche 992, I should be able to go down the road and after let's say 45 miles an hour, make this tail go up. So in this episode, we are going to see if we can get this thing to function mechanically like we want. So where we are here is I've already obviously cut the deck lid in half and I've started experimenting compared to the video you guys saw with positioning this thing horizontally because I couldn't get it to move past here. So I've got to move this thing back a little bit and keep it horizontal. 
But then I've got to figure out how I'm going to angle it to get this thing up the way I want. I can't do any of that until I get rid of whatever this material is. It's like a Kevlar or something. And it was stopping these things from doing what they were supposed to do. So, off camera, I'm going to hit this thing with a heat gun. Like I did this little edge. It's, it takes forever. So I'm just going to do that, put my headphones on, jam on this thing for a couple minutes, and then get back to you guys once I've got the thing nice and cleaned out. All right, looks like our spacing is better now. The decklet's fitting all the way down, which is what I was trying to do. And now I'm gonna see if lowering this thing makes this thing go flush. If it does, then we are getting really close. And that means all I really have to do is create a, well, we'll get there in a second. Let's first see if this thing works. Oh, yes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's too cool. Guys, come on. How cool is that? So, I'm pretty close here uh, to real proof of concept. What I need to do is I want the tail to go up to about here, which is like full ducktail style. To do that, I need to figure out how to rise this thing while this thing pushes. So I can either change the angle, which I may be able to. I might still be able to angle it a little bit more. Um, the problem is I don't know how much space I have in my engine compartment yet. I may actually have to put the engine in while it's sitting here. I either need to make a bell crank that as this thing pushes, it pushes the tail up, which could be a thing. It might be the thing. Uh, or make some kind of like V here so that as this thing pushes along, look, what would it be doing? It would be, it would be like up here. I gotta figure it out. I have to do some engineering. So this is really where I wanna end up, which is basically the ducktail angle. And you can see the difference I have here. This is where my stanchion, is that right, is? And it's gonna come out to like here straight. Then this thing is obviously holding it up. My brain's not the right brain for this. I've got a creative brain, but not an engineering brain. However, what I do know is I've gotta see if I have engine clearance no matter what. So I'm, I'm, I'm bummed about it, but I'm gonna to have to probably jack the car up and slide the engine underneath just to see if the thing will work and maybe do some proper positioning there. Okay, it's the next day, and yesterday we really had a meeting of the minds about the engineering of this thing. I had a buddy come over and we stared at it for a couple hours. I had my buddy Jeff from Home Built uh, do some diagrams and send them over. Now I think I have a plan, but I can't do anything until I put the engine back in the car and see how much space I have to work with. Uh, from what I remember, I have enough space, but I may not. If this works the way I hope it will, it's gonna be a super clean execution of this motor and of the tail. So let's get the engine in. Engine's in, it's relatively close to where it's gonna be fore and aft. These these are right where they're supposed to be. And this is basically where we landed with this. What we would do is drill two holes here for the stanchions to come up for the ducktail. But the issue I'm having right now is how close this motor is to the, the wheel here. So what I wanna do here is disconnect basically this entire bracket and see if I can remove it. Because the idea would be to get this motor to mount directly to the car, like using some rivnuts 
And then I should be pretty close. So let's try to take this thing apart. Okay, so good news, decoupling the entire motor from that frame gives me a lot more room to work with. So what I'm gonna do now is get the engine back out and then I'm gonna put a couple of rib nuts in this inner structure here so I can bolt the structure directly to the car. That'll give me a little bit of wiggle room in terms of where to put these stanchions. So that is the next plan. These bolts stick out a little bit right here. What I'd like to do is mark the inside of this for riv nuts. So I'm going to use this Sharpie to kind of draw on the metal and I'm going to scrape this thing a little bit so I have three spots that I can put riv nuts. In which case I can mount this thing permanently to the car and then I can drill the holes for these guys but I can manipulate them because these are all movie. They move around a lot. They're movie. Movie. Would you like to see a movie? Uh, anyway, so that's what's going on in, in my world right now. Now this has been covered on a few different channels, but this is a riv nut kit. And riv nuts are super handy when you can't get to the back side of a panel, but you want to affix some bolts to it. So this is what a riv nut looks like. It literally looks like a rivet. And the cool thing about it is, is that you can screw a bolt into it. Um, what you do, is you choose the right size riv nut for your fasteners. You change the head, and I've actually never used this kit before, I just got it. So you change the head to the correct size, and then you basically rivet it into the panel, which then gives you a threaded insert to bolt whatever you want to it. So we're gonna do that right this very second. Now, if I can figure out how to use this thing, we'll be in really good shape. All right, so that was the old collar. This is the new one. So, yeah, there you go. So basically, you thread this on like that. You put it through the hole and then you squeeze this thing together. It ends up putting this great little ring around the outside and you've got this thing totally affixed to the panel. It rivets it in. I don't know if you can see that. But it's a great piece of kit, as they say. One down. One good, and second one. Yeah, good. Let's see if we can get these things to pop out. Go. OK, 
Okay, this is the super loose version, but let's see how we did. I have no idea. By the way, I have no idea if what I just did is actually gonna work. But it sure looks kind of cool. Okay, that didn't work the way I'd hoped right out of the gates. I need to give this a little more angle, I think. These things are kind of hitting right here. That's not where we want them to hit. We can get that going. We'll be in much better shape. I'm gonna try to put a bolt through here at the right angle. Jeez. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, my motor came out over here. Oh, so that's a pinch bolt. I took something out I shouldn't have. Cool. All right, guys, moment of truth. All right. Come on, that is so sick. Come on. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. things I've ever done. All right, gang, here it is. Now, this is gonna get a ton of stiffening and cleanup, and this is just a little flappy piece right now. I will clean all this up and weld in pieces and maybe even put a little carbon fiber insert or do something. So this whole thing is gonna get reinforced, maybe also with carbon fiber, I don't know yet. So there it is. Look at that cool ducktail angle. And it's very similar to that ducktail angle. I'm just so excited about how that turned out. And it works. All right, so that is arguably one of the coolest things I've ever done on a car, if not the coolest. There's obviously more engineering to do to make the whole piece really rigid and make it so it's really uh, can withstand, you know, 70, 100 miles an hour of downforce. Because right now it won't, it's just too flappy and light. But proof of concept is there and I can continue to work on this thing. I'm actually gonna lean on some people that have some pretty incredible carbon fiber experience and see if they can help me like stiffen the whole thing up, maybe put some cool hinges on it, I don't know. There's all kinds of things that we'll do to this thing, but the proof of concept is there. We pulled it off. This is going to be the first vintage 911 in the world with active aero. And that is just so ridiculous to even to say out loud. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little engineering marvel with me. And uh, as always, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here. You guys keep on rocking and we'll see you next time.